Hello everybody and welcome to TidyX. Well, this really isn't a normal episode. This is going to be a recap of my experience at our Studio Conf 2022. And let me tell you, it was a lot of fun being there this year. So let me quickly make myself a little bit smaller so you can see uh, what I'll be talking about here. So, all right. So our studio, the big news that came out of it in the first uh, keynote was that our studio is changing its name. It's now Posit. And so I think this is a really interesting move. I think it's it's really exciting. It gives a really great opportunity to extend an olive branch to other languages and really recognize that uh, data science isn't one language. We all love R. Clearly R is, you know, my favorite programming language right now. But that isn't always going to be true necessarily. And so our studio is trying to become a hundred year company. They're gonna be around to support us data scientists for years to come. And so they wanted to change their name to reflect that and reflect that. R is a popular language right now, but it may not always be in the future. And so that combined with wanting to, you know, extend an olive branch to, you know, Python, Julia, um, all these great programming languages, Posit seems like a really great move. And I'm really excited for uh, the folks that work at Posit, not our studio, and what the future holds for them. It sounds really exciting. Um, in addition to that, Quarto, you, we've heard a um, whispers of this over the last several months and you know initially I didn't quite grok it but uh, Quarto was officially announced and released um, it to, at the conference this last week and Quarto is uh, you know being marketed as like the next generation of our markdown and I was like what does that mean what what does that mean for me as a person that's comfortable with with uh, our markdown but not necessarily with Quarto um, and not really understanding what what that means for me um, and, you know, functionally, for me as a person that's very comfortable with our markdown, our markdown's not going away. It's not being removed. Um, but Quarto represents new functionality, new tooling, and new opportunity that I'm really excited for uh, now that I understand it a little bit. So as you can see here, um, the code chunks look very similar. Um, but you may see that this is now in the visual editor. Um, and this was apparently kind of the starts of Quarto. Uh, making a visual editor for multiple languages. Uh, but now they have these new pipes, or um, they're calling them hash pipes. Uh, we'll see if that sticks uh, <laughs> for um, how they uh, define code chunks. And this is then able to be run across multiple uh, different languages. And you can actually apply these globally. So we don't have to, you know, uh, normally in R Markdown, you'd have to set them at the very top with like knitter options. Here, in theory, you can set them in your YAML header at the very top to set all code to never show at all. So that's kind of a really cool thing um, that the opportunity holds. Additionally, um, there's this new format YAML at the very top. And so you could change this incredibly easily. And this can just render this, uh, what I'm talking about here. Here's my notes for today's episode. And it can render as a standard you know, output here but then you can very easily change this. And this is this was always the struggle what, with, um, with our markdown is that you'd have to rejigger your code. But now you can just update your format to like reveal, let me make sure that I spelled that right, Real.js. It also has really cool YAML, um, YAML help right there. So it'll make sure that it, it does that right. But it can also immediately render over into your um, into a reveal JS or other languages. And I think that's really cool and really powerful because that was always a massive pain with our markdown. Next, the keynotes. Of course, the keynotes were amazing. We had uh, Julia Silgi and Max Kuhn talk about um, the uh, tidy models and all the really cool tools that they've been building there, really showing all the um, all the tools that the community has built as well to help with uh, ML and the adoption of that and making it really easy. Uh, next, we had Joe Chang at the end of day one, gave a really, um, it was very vulnerable uh, keynote, uh, talking about 10 years of Shiny, because apparently they first released Shiny or showed Shiny um, in 2012, um, I think actually uh, 10 years from today at JSM. Uh, but he shared some very um, heavy, not heavy, uh, very emotional um, stories about how he almost left our studio. Um, and then he had the idea for Shiny and just was so enthusiastic about it. And I think a lot of us can understand 
how he felt, where he was coming from. And it was an amazing keynote. I highly suggest you watch that. But it wasn't just an emotional keynote. He actually shared some really cool and exciting stuff for Shiny. Now that it's been out there for 10 years, um, they announced Shiny for Python. So we may have to do some Python on this episode, I know, or in this, in this, uh, in TidyX. We've never done that before. Python's not a main language of mine, but I think it'd be really exciting to see how that works and share with you all. Uh, let us know in the comments down below if that's something you'd like to see. Uh, and then also some really fun uh, capabilities of Shiny uh, that exists. Um, there are also a bunch of talks about Shiny. So, Shiny, Shiny, Shiny. <laughs> finally, um, well not finally, but next there were some great talks, as always, at our Studio Conf. I uh, had the opportunity to give a talk on packages and process. Um, uh, then one of my colleagues gave a talk on how we evaluate our packages. Uh, Maya Gans gave a really, really fun talk on design systems, and it was just, just pop, pop, pop. It was, it was a lot of fun for me to watch. Um, and then another talk that I enjoyed watching uh, was Tan Ho talking about tools in GitHub. Um, he talked about releases, which is something I've used kind of sparingly, you know, as I release packages but never really looked much into the functionality. Um, and then I used GitHub Actions, of course, to do CI CD for a lot of my, um, my R packages, but I haven't thought much more about that. And Tan wrote a really cool, or wrote, wrote a cron job in GitHub Actions, which means it'll run code on a certain cycle um, so that it automated a process that you would normally have had to done manually. So I'm really excited for these two talks to uh, go live uh, now that, um, and so we can watch them again and I can share them and, you know, celebrate these, these two folks that have contributed so much to the art community. Next, lots of workshops at our studio conf as always. Um, I talked to Eric Nance, he ran a, a workshop on Shiny, apparently. Some of the work here from TidyX helped him out with that, um, helped him kind of crystallize some ideas. So great to hear that, Eric, if you're watching. Um, it's wonderful to hear that you found that valuable. Otherwise, I was also helping teach a workshop on clinical reporting in R, so I can't really comment on uh, other workshops other than I'm sure they're amazing. Um, so in closing, lots of great content, lots of fun people, and I already miss uh, my R friends. I was definitely exhausted by the end there, but I um, was also having you know the time of my life seeing everybody, just being able to talk R with people. I saw some uh, TidyX fans there as well. Uh, I really appreciate you coming up to me and, and talking with me and telling me how much you value Tidy X. This is a project, it's a passion project for myself and for Patrick, and we love doing this, but we don't always get to hear and see the fruits of what's happened, how it actually helps you. Um, so if Tidy X has ever helped you, please leave a comment down below or uh, tag us on Twitter at, ty at Tidy underscore explained and let us know what Tidy X means to you and how it's helped you. So in closing, also, PositConf will be in Orlando next year, end of May. That's right over my birthday. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you there. Um, hopefully I'll be able to attend. Uh, but if you're not feeling like you can attend, that is totally fine too. I want to support you. And uh, just, you know, spend this next year talking about R with you. So with that, I'm going to close. And as always, keep on exploring your world.